Are you looking forward to Chrysalis? The right, movie? Right. Oh, God. It's going to be wonderful. The story Chrysalis is about what could happen to the world if we keep, you know, not caring about the environment, if we don't care about what we're doing to other people and what we're doing outside. I mean, really, inside this research facility, we're trying to create this hope, and that's what we do sort of every day in our own homes and, you know, in science uh, labs all over the world right now, in this time, in this present. We're trying to figure out how to save the world, how to fix it. The story of Chrysalis takes place uh, in the not-so-distant future, and essentially the world is uninhabitable. Human beings, animals, uh, nothing can survive. Well, nature itself has turned on us in a way. There's a group of scientists who are in an underground bunker or laboratory, if you may, and they are working on artificial ways or means to, to uh, sustain plant life and life outside in general. I think human beings have lost the ability to put their faith in something they cannot see, touch, or explain. The story for me is about a group of scientific minds trying every possible combination of theories to try and explain the situation. One of the scientists named Smith uh, who works in this laboratory, he actually becomes ill early on in the film and he starts undergoing all these changes and as time goes on he is completely engulfed by a chrysalis, a hard shell over his body. And so essentially this provokes uh, two uh, very different uh, points of view uh, in the film. One coming from one scientist who believes that it's possibly the uh, end of mankind. This is a, an abomination that's going to bring about the end of all of mankind. And there's a more hopeful uh, doctor from the, from the main laboratory who uh, believes this could be the savior. This could be the answer to the, our world which is in dire straits. It's the battle between science and logic and rationality versus faith, hope, religion, belief. So the original Chrysalis story was published back in 1946. It actually appeared in an issue of Amazing Stories, which was a science fiction pulp magazine at the time. And 20 years later, it made its way into Essays for Space, which was an anthology of uh, Ray Bradbury stories. I think my initial reaction was colored in the best possible way by the enthusiasm um, that Roger uh, and Cheyenne, when I first met with them, had for the material. Coming off their enthusiasm, I started looking deeper and I just loved the material. I fell for it. A couple of years ago, we uh, put together a short film. It was called A Piece of Wood and it was based on another Ray Bradbury story. It did very well on the festival circuit. It actually got picked up for distribution, which is something that doesn't really happen that often with, with short films. But most importantly, Ray Bradbury liked it very much. He felt very excited about it. Uh, he actually said to us that he felt we were really true to the source material. When we got that feedback from him, we felt that we, we could actually approach him about putting together a feature film. We had a couple of ideas, a couple of other stories we liked. Chrysalis was one of them. Two years later, here we are starting principal photography on it. I did a piece of wood uh, with the same filmmakers, and um, this was their next project. And uh, fortunately, they chose to incorporate me into the casting idea. They were getting some good reviews of Piece of Wood. They capitalized on the momentum of that movie. And uh, fortunately, I came along for the ride for the main feature. I think this movie deals with some very deep ideas and things to contemplate, you know, like any great um, sci-fi or short story writer. I mean, Bradbury leaves so many questions open. He poses a moral dilemma. If there's one thing I'd like the audience to take away from this movie is, is the pondering of, of the very situation. What would they do if they were, there were a handful of people left to hopefully get humankind out of the biggest jam ever?